Hello there, welcome to my channel. This is Jean Adero. I am Africa's Life Coach, and yes, I gave myself that title because I decided that I was going to help uh, leaders and African professionals end their rat race, release cultural shackles so that they can live lives of their dreams. And I find that I am in a space where I have to practice what I preach. And so this is my idea of ending the rat race and um, living the life of power and possibility that I, I create in terms of my help. So I have been on the Weight Watchers uh, plan for the last two months. I think it's heading to two months now. Wait, I think it was at the end of November that I went back to Weight Watchers. And then um, uh, I, of course, had to endure the holidays. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I managed to sail out of that just gaining one pound. And uh, now in the new year, I am truly following the plan and doing my best uh, to stay as healthy as I can and on track and on purpose. This week, um, I, I decided uh, that I'm probably going to only report my weight loss five pounds at a time <laughs> because I realized that I am losing two ounces, four ounces, six ounces at a time, and I don't know, um, that doesn't make me excited at all. <laughs> so what I did was I decided that I was, wait, I was gonna wait for the cumulative um, amount and I'll do it five pounds at a time. So last week I reported that in total I had lost five pounds. I'm still going to do the weekly videos, but then I will uh, talk about the journey. And remember, we said the journey is a mindset journey and not necessarily a weight loss journey. It is really changing my mind so that I can uh, do things that I want to do in the way that I want to do them. Um, one of the key things for me this week was I started running again. Uh, running was something that I used to do uh, probably five times a week when I was at my highest, I would run, uh, not highest weight, highest in terms of uh, commitment to program. And I would run like, I think I would run Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then on Saturday morning, I'd go and get my hair done. And then after that, um, once my hair was done, I would have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday to have that nice, perfect do before I went back to get my hair done. But since I left corporate America, I really don't get my hair done as frequently as I used to. And also post COVID, I, I just don't. And now hair doesn't bother me in the way that it did. So I'm, I'm totally in a different space. I can figure myself out in the way that I want to look and uh, plan for days when I want to have a polished look done by a professional. So uh, it should not be hard for me to get out and run, but these days I have other problems. <laughs> At least I created other problems. If it was just about hair, uh, it, it would mean that I would be exercising as, uh, as much as I want to, but uh, obviously that hasn't been the problem. Uh, so um, I'm just getting back to it. Last week I committed and I said I was going to go out and walk, and I did walk several days. We're still getting a lot of rain. Uh, not really a lot, but we're getting rain. So sometimes it, it um, you know, crumps my style. But uh, this week I have been going running. I did a little bit last week as well. And I'm just running two miles from the top of the subdivision to the end of the community and back. And I think I mentioned that last week. But what I'm also doing is I remembered the first time I went out running, it's usually when I haven't exercised for a while, something happens. And I don't know if this happens to you as well but I get really itchy and the itch feels like it is underneath my skin, like in my blood. And someone said before that it was about my circulation. I've had this problem for years and years and years. But when I first go out after being sedentary for a while, I usually get that feeling and it is awful because you want to scratch. But I always know that if I start scratching in the street, I will not make it home because I'll have to sit down and scratch. And it feels like it's scratching, but you can't get to it. And someone needs to tell me what it is because I don't really know what it is. And if it's circulation, I'm okay with it. Uh, but I, I had that really bad the first time I went out. And then um, now I'm fine. I can actually run the two miles. But what I do uh, with running, when I'm getting back to running, especially when I'm so out of shape, I usually go back to my book, the um, complete 
book of running. Yes, I have a book for running. <laughs> and I told you I love my book so much. So I think you know that about me by now. But um, I have this book that I bought when I was first, first running my first, K, my first 5K. This was many, many years ago. And I always go back to this book because the best piece of advice that I got from this book was that when you're first starting, run as slowly as you can. And it, it sounds weird, but it's the best piece of advice because you just, you take away all the pressure and then you just do what you can. But one of, one of the goals for me is if I say that I'm running two miles, I run two non-stop miles. If I say that I'm running one mile, I run one, nine, one non-stop mile. I do not like stopping at all. So run as slow as you can is really good advice for me because when I'm running as slowly as I can, it means that um, I can go further and I train myself on endurance sooner than than later and so that's what i've been doing i've been going out and i run as slowly as i can and let me tell you the greatest insult yesterday i wear a fitbit and i've been wearing this fitbit it's a kind of old and i'm sure they've come up with better ones but i've been wearing this one for maybe like the last five years and i was looking at my um records on uh, on my fitbit just to see how many because what it does uh, it con converts, for those of you who don't know, your Fitbit uh, converts your activity into points, and I have connected it to my um, Weight Watchers app. So basically, I get po bonus points for activity, and I could choose to eat those points, but most of the time, I just don't. Um, I mean, for me to eat them, it would mean that I have completely run out of my weeklies, and I just haven't needed to. And that's not a practice that I like. As a matter of fact, I think on the app, you can uh, configure it so that uh, your points are tracked for activity, but that you don't actually include them in your weekly points to eat, right? So um, this week, I'm looking at my Fitbit records, and I don't always look at them because, I, again, I, I don't need that those extra points for anything, right? And I'm looking at my Fitbit record, and my Fitbit says... It, it tracked me as being on an elliptical machine. I was running. <laughs> I was running, and it tracked me as elliptical. In other words, just standing there moving. I was like, this Fitbit is about to bring me some emotional issues. I might need an emotional support animal to keep me going at this rate. It was so funny. I laughed and I was just like, I, we need to get this changed. But what alternatively I could do is before I run, because I'm running so slowly and Fitbit recognizes that I'm running so slowly, I could just um, uh, push this button on, on, my, on my Fitbit when I run so that it tracks me as running, right? But it's not a big deal because I'm still getting my activity points. I'm still moving and I'm still... Um, doing what I, I said that I was going to do. So this week, uh, I'm going to continue running. Um, I'm skipping today because I have a deadline that I want to hit with my work. And so I just want to be heads down today. But then tomorrow, uh, I will run. And I will run on Saturday and Sunday as well so that I fulfill my week's uh, plan, the one that I set for myself. As you can tell, I am not really focused on the mechanics of what I'm eating. I am eating um, my zero-point foods. I maximize on them. I think last week I called, the, I called it clean eating, and those are really my zero-point foods. I'm getting my protein. I get uh, chicken breasts. I cook those. I make this frittata with um, eggs. Uh, this week i um, having salmon, and it's baked uh, in the oven, so it is just the seasoning and I, I really don't even put olive oil on the salmon because I, I mean it, it turns out really well even without the olive oil and so I'm still eating um, I, I, this week in the meeting and remember I go to my meetings every Monday at 10 30 uh, in the meeting we talked about uh, fixing your plate with your protein in mind as the first thing and so I started doing that this week um, so it was kind of yes, yesterday. It was kind of funny. I had to pay attention because I had made this vegetable skillet with um, cauliflower, peppers, red red peppers, yellow peppers, green pepper, and uh, cauliflower. And uh, I think I had 
beans, black beans, uh, a little bit of black beans, and then I had, um, I think I put scallions in it, and it was delicious. So, so delicious. Probably, that's probably a recipe I need to add. And I find these recipes or recipe ideas on Instagram. So it was just so pretty with the white cauliflower, the red onions, the green onions, the yellow onions, the black beans, and it made such a nice medley. And uh, one of the options was to put cheese on the top, and I did, and I went to the store and I got fat-free cheese, um, which is one point for quarter a cup. And then I also, um, and this is not for this particular skillet meal, I also got uh, Publix um, fat, uh, reduced fat, um, uh, sour cream, which is one point for two tablespoons. I put that on my baked potato, my sweet potato. The sweet, I bake my sweet potatoes and I put sour cream, which I, I found out is kind of odd. I didn't know people don't put uh, um, sour cream on, ba on sweet potatoes. I do. And I, I also put cheese. Uh, so I had both the cheese and the sour cream on my baked potato. And then for my this skillet vegetable thingy, I, I just, and it was so easy because very little, um, very little uh, olive oil, just literally a one point dish. And you can eat a whole lot because it's just mainly veggies, right? And it fills you up quite nicely. But I suggest that you have a protein. This week, what I did with it is I, I made uh, some quinoa and I just boiled my quinoa and then I mixed it into the bowl. So it was a nice, um, and I call it a bowl because it kind of looks like those burrito bowls at Chipotle, but um, it was just really cauliflower that I had cut into pieces and then salt, the, the peppers, green, red, yellow, the scallions. I don't remember what else was in there, but it is really, really filling and tastes absolutely delicious. And you can add the cheese on the top, the cheddar cheese on top, and it's really, really good. But just be careful with the cheese because the cheese can get you off track. Tastes so good, it can get you, get you off track. So anyway, I don't even know where I went with that, but my point is to say that I'm still eating my uh, on plan. I am doing the best that I can. On Sunday though, I ate and ate and ate and I had made cornbread and I usually buy Jiffy Mix and I put uh, two Jiffy Mix, the little boxes, and I put a can of pineapple and it's usually, and then I make them in the muffin, uh, muffin trays and I make 12 of them and those 12 are one point each, no, two points each. Uh, they used to be one point, but now they are two points each. And I ate so many of those uh, this weekend. I was emotional eating on Sunday only. On Saturday, I was fine. And then on Sunday, I was uh, eating emotionally. And I realized that it was because I didn't write in my journal. I have a journal that I have specifically for writing about my food journey. I just do gratitude. And then sometimes I write tips. And then I use it also for the meeting. And... Um, I didn't, I hadn't written in it on, I didn't write in it on Friday, Saturday. And then on Sunday I was just eating and like, I was like a vacuum cleaner. And on Monday when I was just looking back at what is it that caused me to eat like that? Then I realized that I think it's because I have made journaling so much of a habit and it was keeping me accountable. So I said I was going to start, um, journaling uh, again and this week I've been pretty good. I'm just writing little notes to myself on how to uh, follow through on what I want to do. So I'm looking forward to that. But all in all, um, I lost, I think, like six ounces. So like I said before, I'm going to start reporting my weight loss, the actual pounds lost, every five pounds. I think it just makes sense. It makes me feel good, and it'll give good milestones. You will see that it has taken me five weeks to lose another five pounds, or if it's three weeks to lose another five pounds. I just think it's easier for me. But um, I'm, I'm committed to this. I noticed that my face is getting a little slimmer. Yes, it's getting a little slimmer, my cheeks. Are like coming down and then of course remember my shoulders the last time I said my shoulders were getting skinny <laughs> so my shoulders I was looking and I was like oh I feel this bone right here and I feel this bone right here so that means the fat is leaving me and um, that made me really really excited <laughs> because I can't see it anywhere else right I can't see it anywhere else so I do feel lighter though when I get out of bed because I'm not going to bed with that full belly anymore. My belly is just nice and ready for bed when I'm going to sleep, right? 
And, um, you know, I'm going to continue with this step by step, step by step. And I'll keep reporting that for me, and this is not for everybody. Here's the deal. Weight Watchers works. If you follow the plan, it works. They're basically asking you to eat lean meats, whole grains, fruits, vegetables, drink water. Wait, you don't even need Weight Watchers to tell you that, right? So we know it works. And I know for me, what the problem is, is that I usually try to complicate it with my mindset. I act like if I don't track this meal, uh, my stomach won't know that the food came in. It knows. And like I said last week, it converts it however it needs to be converted. There's a formula in your stomach that converts. <laughs> and I call it a formula in, a, in my stomach. You know I failed biology, so... There's a formula that says, um, this is how much you ate, this is how much we're going to convert into fat, and this is where the fat deposits. There's a system on how your body works. I don't know the science of it. I'm not trying to learn the science of it. I just know that if I am faithful, and remember, to, you've got to be a certain kind of person to get the result that you want. And I want to be faithful and I want to have self-control. So if I am faithful and I have self-control, then I will see the results that I want. Right? That's how I've resolved it. I'm going to follow this as, as far as I can go. I have a huge goal. My weight loss goal is big. I haven't shared it with you yet because I want to wait until I have absorbed it as the thing that I want to do. And then I'll share it with you. Okay? But again, thank you for visiting my channel. And if this is helpful to, to you, I'd like for you to subscribe. This is really more accountability for me. But if you believe that you want to go on this journey with me, I invite you into my space. And I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Have a nice week. Bye.